Welcome. Unsportsmanlike Conduct Fantasy Edition. We are all in for a new season and we are raring and ready to go. This is Kip Cooper sitting beside me as, as always. Buzz Birch, as always. And we will be bringing you the top 10. These are the guys you need to draft in your fantasy. We're going to be breaking it down. Breaking down the top 10. All right, let's start. What? Let's start with number 10. Who's, who's number 10 on our list? Well, to start off the list, uh, not necessarily someone you're going to go with a 10 to pick, but uh, our first quarterback nonetheless. We'll start with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yes, viable candidate. Viable candidate. We know uh, running backs may, or uh, quarterbacks may be losing a little bit of... Their luster is gone. Luster, yeah, this year. But uh, if you're going to pick any quarterback, he's going to be the first round. It's going to be Aaron Rodgers. The guy uh, coming off of his, his career passing attempts, uh, a career high, 552. It's uh, increased the last three years. What, what does he have? How many touchdowns the last he two years? He has almost 80. 80 passing touchdowns. That's incredible. He is on record-breaking pace. You know, you, and he, I, you can't tell me he's not going to put up 40 again. Yeah. So I think that he's the best quarterback in the draft. And uh, They don't really have any other options on, on offense. Right. They're not really looking uh, to, to, to be pa- pass a lot. So uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know he's going to be throwing the ball. So if you're going to go with the quarterback, uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be their only guy cracking the first round. For sure. All right, so at uh, number nine, we got, a, we got a running back. We're getting into the running backs. He's out of Cleveland. His name's Trent Richardson. This guy is a bull. He's a beast. He was hurt last year, and he still managed to put up 11 touchdowns. Imagine what he's going to do this year with a clean slate. And they have not also addressed their quarterback issues so I believe he's going to be getting the rock a he's, good he's percentage absolutely, of the time. Yeah, going to be a featured back without a doubt, um, and that's definitely rare in this league. So you definitely want to get him if you can. He's young. He has a lot of potential. He battled through injuries last year, but it looks like he's going to be healthy this year. Mm-hmm. And he's a workload back. You know he's going to get the ball. Yeah, I, this is why he's at number nine because there's maybe a question of his health, and they think that that new rule about lowering your head might be for this guy. So we don't know if that's going to carry over to his stats. But I, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be getting the rock a lot, and he's going to be running the ball up the middle a lot. Physical player is uh, fun to watch and fun to root for on your fantasy team, so should be getting some touchdowns too. Not that Cleveland scores a lot, but if they do, it'll probably be through Trent, Trent Richardson. He'll so, have 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Crack in the top 10 at number 9 is Trent Richardson. Moving on, still at running back. Uh, number eight, a familiar face, a uh, guy from Baltimore. He's got a ring. RR, yeah, he's, he's got a Super Bowl ring now. Ray Rice, yeah. cracking our top ten at number eight. Yeah, he had a great season last year, kind of flew under the radar because of the Super Bowl season, but he had nine touchdowns um, with his, basically, you know, Bolden and all these weapons leaving. I think that Ray Rice, there's no reason to believe that he can't continue to do this all the time. Yeah, definitely going to get you, you know, above a thousand yards rushing. Going to be close to probably 500 yards uh, receiving as well. You got the thing about Ray Rice, especially in a PPR league, uh, he's had 60 plus receptions over the last three years. Absolutely, that's one really touchdown. great yeah. for a running back to be able to get the ball like that all the time. Uh, backfield, that's that's awesome. So Ray Rice coming in. At number eight because he's going to get some touches and, and he a, puts up long runs sometimes over 50 yards which gives you the bonus points in some leagues that's absolutely true so ray rice at number eight very good choice but just kind of edging him out at number seven is our good buddy doug martin he's a soft doug e doug yeah the muscle hamster is back for his sophomore season he had a great first season um do we have any reasons to believe that this guy can't continue his pace? Uh, absolutely not. Um, Tampa Bay looks to be, uh, you know, a fairly decent team. Their their defense has increased. It looks like um, so with, with a better defense, they'll be looking to run the ball a little bit more to, to you know, kind of to uh, put out those games a little bit quicker. So Doug Martin will definitely feature from that. He really broke out last year. His Under first the radar, four point six yards per carry. Great numbers. Um, great numbers. He also had almost fifty receptions. Uh, that's really great for a first year running. He was a workhorse there in Tampa Bay. He got him some wins also, but, I mean, these numbers that he had, he had a couple of weeks where he put up, like, 50 points in some leagues. Yeah, he absolutely so. carried some teams to wins last year single-handedly. So you're going to want to draft this guy. He's at number seven, but, you know, we got a guy at number six. And this guy, he's one receiver that's cracking our top ten. But he's a really good receiver. His name's Calvin Johnson. He's out of Detroit. 
He had a monster season. He had a career season. He had a record-breaking season. He had 122 receptions and nearly 2,000 yards, which is unheard of. And the other thing, too, is he was doing that all uh, knowing everyone knew they were only going to throw it to him. They didn't really have a running option. Absolutely. Uh, hardly anything for a second receiver option. So everyone kind of focused on him on the defense. You saw him go up. Uh, that's the problem with, uh, unfortunately, not a lot of touchdowns last year. That definitely dropped because in the red zone, you know, you can kind of focus in on Calvin Johnson. On the upside, though, he's still getting all the targets in the red zone. Yeah, of course, and I think that Stafford, with another year growing, I think that he'll be better, and I believe that Stafford was plagued with injuries, so I think that this year they're going to be on pace to you know put up some really great numbers i think that number six is you know he's the best receiver going but you know there's a few running backs that are just out of this world we're going to go to number five yeah cracking our top five now the top five the top five LaShawn Shady McCoy is going to come in at number five for us nasty nasty running back this guy is mean this guy puts up big numbers with the new offense with Chip Kelly in Philadelphia, the sky's the limit. It's going to be exciting to see what kind of uh, options he's going to be he can be played in, really. Yeah, I mean, he had kind of a iffy year last year, but he's a workhorse. I think that, you know, Andy Reid just didn't utilize him correctly. I think that he is going to be playing his best season ever, so he's that's why he cracked the top five. Definitely today. underutilized a little bit last year, but Chip Kelly looks to focus in on him, especially with question marks at quarterback. For sure. We're not even sure who's going to be starting at this point. So look for him to get a lot of receptions out of the backfield as, as well as a lot of touches. For sure. Another guy bouncing to Andy Reid's new, new team, team, number four on our list of the guys you have to draft in the first round. Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles in charge. I'm still confident he's going to be okay this year, even though Andy Reid, the pass-happy quarterback, is going to be there. Uh, I mean, uh, his pass happy coach. Will, his receptions will definitely go up. Yeah, look for his receiving yards to go up, receptions to go up, and receiving touchdowns to go up. And if you look at what he averaged per carry last season, 5.3, he was definitely underutilized in Romeo Cornell's system. With Andy Reid, he's going to be getting a new look. He, they're going to be, he's going to be running new slip screens. It's going to be a great system for him. I see him racking up a lot of receiving touchdowns this year, maybe a lesser on the rushing touchdowns, but he's still going to get either 9 or 10, I think. Yeah, it should, it should be around 10 touchdowns and a lot of yards. You know, he had 5.3 last year, as you said, and also, you know, before his injury played uh, season in 11, in 2010, he had 6.4 yards per carry for the year. Uh, which is really so outstanding. This is what he does. This he, is what he does. You're going to want to draft him. He's number top four five. on He cracked the top five, no problem. No problem. He's a close follow-up to the Beast, Beast Mode. Beast Mode. Seattle. Marshawn Lynch. Seattle has developed this player. They use him a lot. They don't mess around. I think that he is... He's tough. He likes Skittles. They give him the rock. They, they give, give him the ball. He's gonna be a. He's got some compliments now. A little bit more on the receiving end with a uh, Percy Harvin, who also looks to kind of scare and shield away some of the focus from Marshawn Lynch. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of people are thinking, oh, okay, now they're gonna be passing a little bit more. That's true. But you know what? They're putting up 50 points a couple times w with ease last year. Yeah, and he's and look for that to that kind of thing to keep going. And when they're in the red zone, you know they're gonna give it to Marshawn Lynch three times in a row. And you know what? He produces every time. He's going to. He got 11 touchdowns last year. He got 12 the year before that. We love him. Yeah, as as get him. That's why he's number three on our list. He's a. Uh, he's, yeah. He's great. You know, if you're gonna want to draft him, if you can, if you you know, if he falls to you, pick, get him. Get him immediately. So now we get the top two. This is tough. Yeah, this is like a teeter totter here, but I believe that we chose correctly. I think so too. I don't think how there's any other way, really. So who do we got at number two? Number two. Buzz. Drum roll. <laughs> Arian Foster yes. of the Houston Texans. Texans. Not the Rockets, the Texans. Yeah. Arian Foster is a monster. He is an absolute. Uh, he can do every job on the field. He can 17 touchdowns last year. Incredible. He's, his speed, his receptions, his hands. He's just got really nimble ankles. This, this player doesn't mess around. He's going to put up great, great, great numbers. He plays on a good team. He gets the ball a fair amount, and he's got a relief to kind of, you know, make sure he's not going to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. He should be good. Uh, I, I think you, you can't go wrong picking him as your number one pick. Um, 
you know, it's Arian Foster. He's reliable. He's been great the last three years. You know he's going to get touchdowns. You know he's going to get rushing yards. And you know he's going to get receiving yards. So you can't go wrong with him. But you, you can't not go right with their number one pick. Adrian, A.D., all day, Peterson. Man, this guy is Wolverine. He comes, he has a pretty, you know, he has 12 touchdowns in 2011. Basically tears his ACL. And everyone thinks he's probably done, you know, he won't have that great of a year. No, he proves everyone wrong. He has 12 touchdowns again. He's had 12 Tw- touchdowns the last three seasons rushing. 20, 2,100 yards last year is what he had. Um, you know, he wants to put up 2,500 yards this year. Uh, why can't he? Why can't he? I think I, he can. I, I think he can too. And you know, he started off kind of slow because he was injured. Over the final ten yeah, games, yeah, think about that. He over the final ten slow. games, sixteen hundred yards. That is incredible. One hundred and sixty yards per game. He won his average over the last. He won 10. games. He flat he out wins won. games for you, uh, for Minnesota, yeah. for the Buzz Bombs. for whoever for your whoever team is. Whoever your team is. If you are a fantasy owner and you have a pick. And you're number one. You pick Adrian Peterson. All day. You heard it here. Pick it all day. He's all day. We're all day, too. We're all in. I'm Kip Cooper. I'm Buzz Birch. This has been our Fantasy Top 10. Enjoy. This has been Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Tune in next week for more hard-hitting coverage of the games you care about.